Welcome to the Stogie Geek Show, episode 114. This episode is sponsored by Mr. J's Havana Smoke Shop. Located here in Rhode Island, they have an outstanding selection of premium handmade cigars. And by the Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, it's a great place to enjoy drinking a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. And by Debonair Cigars. Visit stogiegeeks.com forward slash debonair for a list of retailers who carry debonair. Buy some today and get a little more debonair. And by Ocean State Cigars. Try the J. Grotto series, including the Connecticut Shade Silk and the new J. Grotto Anniversary Series. Visit them on the web at OceanStateCigars.com for a list of retailers near you. And welcome, everyone, to this edition of the Stogie Geek Show. I'm your host, Paul Asadorian. Very excited to be here tonight. We've got a fantastic show for you. I'm excited about the Stogies of the Week that I've smoked. I'm excited about a lot of things. Our guest about this kind of introductory segment we have here tonight. Where we're going to talk about some fun things that are happening. Um, to my right, since we're on that camera angle, as I can see, <laughs> Mr. Todd Skull is here from the Havana Cigar Club. Todd, welcome. Thank you, Paul. Back to the show. It's I nice to have you it. here this evening. Thanks for popping over. Um, you guys were kind of having a little Fuego event going on yep, over there. We next had a little J-, J Fuego event, and of that's course the Pats game. We are in New England, so that's right. Patriots are playing. So tonight. the Patriots playing the Jets, which is you know no small game. No, when you're a New England no, fan, certainly not. And um, thank you. I'm just gonna adjust your microphone. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had to text my wife. I'm like, I forgot to like DVR the game. Can you DVR that for me? <laughs> on the lines via Skype, Mr. Will Cooper. Welcome, Will. Hey, greetings, everybody. <laughs> nice to have you here this evening. And uh, you've helped put together this fantastic show we have uh, for our listeners. Um, Gabriel uh, Alvarez will be joining us uh, very shortly here, uh, which I'm excited about. And uh, we've got Stogies of the Week. Uh, do we have a segment, Will, or just Stogies of the Week in the interview? Yeah, well, no, we have, a, we have a segment. We have a segment. I see that. I see that now. Yep. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be awesome. Yep. Um, I was uh, I was actually smoking a pipe before the show, which is very <laughs> interesting. We're going to do a whole segment on pipes. Um, we're not going to do another segment on the vape, I promise. Uh, although I was talking to Mark Jr. Uh, Mark Jr. couldn't be here with us tonight. Um, he's got a lot of personal things going on lately, but uh, he is still very much engaged and will be back. And when I, I was I talked to him today, he was on vacation the past couple shows, and I was talking to him today, and he said that um, I said, you know, I said we did this segment on the on vape and. He was like, I watched that. And he's like, I'm totally into it. He said, my brother makes the e-liquid, makes the vape liquid. So he's like, I've tried all kinds of stuff. My brother's absolutely huge into it. Um, So he was... uh that's all, it all it is. It. It's, it's pretty funny. I was I was actually the first time I was on the show was the vapor show. Yeah. Or the second time I was on the show was yeah. the vapor show. Yeah. It was recently, yeah. and uh, so uh, he really liked the segment. He was like that. He agrees with me. He agreed with me about how it's you know it's kind of like a supplement for certain situations, but yeah. it's no replacement for cigars. So no. he, he felt the the same way. Right. So well, you're gonna get the um, same. And interesting I think that was the point we wanted to make. Yeah. 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 And he, and he likes doing it too, which is yeah. which is interesting. We, we, but it's no. It's, Supplement for for the cigar, no. so and pipes yeah. will be a, a a similar type of supplement from the standpoint of being able to do yeah. it somewhat quick, but <laughs> exactly. I'm just I'm glad to be here smoking. I smoked a lot of cigars today. Forget all that other stuff. <laughs> I smoked my face off today. I I lost track of how many cigars. I, I didn't even get to have my first. Is cigar. it bad if you lose track of this how many? No, fifth. no, no. It's this the way it's supposed to be. Fifth. Yeah. There you go. Well, no, I this is that. actually my fifth, and I didn't start till four o'clock. This has got to be my maybe fifth or sixth. Cigar of the day. And, and the reason why it was five, Paul, is because there was one cigar that you had in there, and I said, let me smoke it to talk about it. Yeah. And, uh, that and was I think we're similar, similar on, on the take of it. It was similar so. to me. I'm glad you did that, Will. And it was similar to me. There was one smoke I had in, in my list. Uh, when we get to it, I'm going to review three uh, Petit Coronas. And I realized oh, when I was uploading wow. the picture, I was like, I didn't smoke the one in the middle. <laughs> and I was actually I was next door and I was talking to Todd because I was I was heating up a some like late lunch in between meal thing, 
and I'm like, dude, I got I to gotta eat because I got to smoke this other one. And I'm like, that's right. It's kind of a small <laughs> cigar. And I like, I got to put some in my stomach before I eat it. And I was glad I did. Uh, yeah. and, and it was very good. And you'll hear more about that. So um, let's talk about, uh, Will, do you have any kind of administrivia or, or anything like that? Um, we have some stuff. Why don't we save the administrivia till the very yeah. end? Okay. Um, I do. I know. I'll say this: we we did get a good response to our contest on the Roma Craft contest last week, and I had a lot of people ask me what the correct answers to that trivia was, and okay. not a lot of people got all the answers. By the way, so oh, I know who the winner. The, I know the who. The, yeah, I know who the winner is of that. Yep, the, he's already had his prize has been shipped out. Yes, yes, we'll talk about that it later. It was almost right? winner by default. Not a lot of people really got either got the answers. They didn't get all the questions right, or they didn't get it in on time. And he had to try twice. He actually sent in a second email and was like, no, my previous answer was wrong. Here's the he, right answer. He got it in before the deadline. Yeah, yeah, that's, yep. that's pretty so awesome. So I, I made the ruling there. Yeah, he's one of the guys that we do a virtual herf with on Google+. Plus. Oh, okay. So I, I, I talk about those guys a lot on the show. They're probably in the chat room, which I'll log into. As I turn it over to – I want Todd to introduce something that we're doing with the Havana Club that is going to be of great interest to our listeners, great oh, yeah. interest to the local community. Uh, Todd was super excited and, and brought oh, this absolutely. to us. Absolutely, we're yeah. behind Todd 100. percent So I'm going to let you introduce uh, this, this. Absolutely, thing uh, that we're doing. I don't want to spoil. Sure, um, we actually have Manuel Noah, who is the master blender for La Aurora, who uh, very rarely gets to come to the states. He gets to come to a show once in a while, but uh, they keep him locked down in the factory pretty well. He is he's a master blender. He's Guillermo's right hand guy, and and it's. He's a great guy. I've spent some time with him over the time, and so we've been working for the last six months to get ge- to to get Manuel Manuel to be able to come up, and um, we've been able to work out to have a blending seminar at the club, um, December sixth, um, which is a Saturday, and Manuel's going to come up, and we're going to do a blending event. He's go- we're going to have a blending kit. It's going to have four um, petite Corona puros in it, all a true puro of one particular tobacco. And it's going what to be... Now what, I'm sorry. What do they call that? We were, Will and I were talking about that. I thought it was Perito. Perito. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a Perito. Perito. And it's basically just one one leaf. One one leaf. Of the same kind of leaf. Of the same priming. Of the, of same, the same priming leaf. of the same yes. leaf. It's actually the blend that goes into the La Aurora Preferito line. It was like we were talking about in our cocktail segment when we said you taste the individual components of the cocktail on their own before you blend it. Same thing with cigars. You taste all the different types of leaves individually rolled as a perito. Mm -hmm. um, And you're going to get those with this. Absolutely. Three or four? Three. Four. Four. You get four peritos. It's it's all the – it's everything that goes into the preferito line. Um, the La Aurora Preferito line has the same blend, but with different wrappers all the way through. And so what's going to happen is you're going to get four of the, four of the particular um, tobacco that's in the blend, smoke them individually. Um, we're going to be able to interact with Manuel. Um, what's great about this, and, th- and this is what's great about uh, Paul and Will and the rest of the Stogie East guys, um, we're going to be able to do it both live at the club and we're going to be able to do it live via Internet. So you're going to get this blending kit, which is going to have those those four individuals of the tobacco. And then you're going to have a preferito number three that will give you the experience of after you smoke the four, seeing what the how they blend blended. together yep. and with a wrapper on it. And which cigar? What size is that? That's a it's a number three. A, a preferito. Preferito number three. Because this is all, all the preferito the tobacco. Together. All the components together. Now, do, is one of the peritos the wrapper? No, no. It's the, you don't it's smoke just, the wrapper. You don't smoke the wrapper in the burrito. You smoke the three different filler blends in the binder, probably. Exactly. Right? Okay. It's the three yeah. different filler blends in the binder, and the, separately, um, and then you, you have the, the preferito, so you can see what the wrapper does. And then there's also a Churchill in it, that is set up as a barber pole with all six wrapper leaves that go on the preferitos. So you'll have all six of those. So then you can smoke the preferito and see how it transitions. Mm-hmm. With each different wrapper, so you're going to get so that's going to be the blending kit plus a lighter and a cutter from La Aurora. So it's going to be a whole uh, blending kit, and it's going to be a three-hour uh, live seminar. stream from you, and it's a, and it's going to be a seminar that's here. That's a great point. So you'll be able to register online and do this blending seminar remotely. 
so you'll be able to register for forty nine dollars. Forty nine dollars here in Rhode Island or remotely. If you want to do just a blending seminar, it's forty nine dollars. You get the four Paritos. You get the Preferito number three, fully blended. You get the is it Churchill. A Toro, Churchill Barber Pole. Barber Pole with all a, six wrappers. With all a lighter and a cutter and a cutter from Lara Aurora. I got in that. its own special um, blending. Right. Package. Yeah. We'll throw in some Stogie Geek stickers into that. Absolutely. We haven't given out stickers on the air pretty much ever, but we've got uh, like thousands of them now. So <laughs> we'll throw in some Stogie Geek stickers for you uh, in that in that pack as well. And you'll be able to, um, from a private login on our Ustream channel, be able to participate in this blending seminar remotely. Um, which has been done before, and we're not the first ones to do it. But Manuel has never done He's one of these remotely. You had to go to the factory in La Aurora. Absolutely. To get this I, I this is the first time that you don't have to travel to the Dominican Republic to the La Aurora factory to see Manuel do one of these blending, blending seminars. seminars. Yeah. And I, I've been fortunate enough to do two of these with Manuel. I'm mm -hmm. um, the first time I went to La Aurora, and then in Puerto Rico at the Falto um, 19th anniversary party, mm -hmm. who, and La Aurora blends the Falto cigars. And Manuel and, and Luis Falto have been friends for 20 years, and um, and it's just amazing. Manuel, not only is he unbelievably knowledgeable and one of the best master blenders in the industry, in it my opinion. It speaks English, just to clarify. It speaks English yeah, very well. To, it's not going to be in Spanish. No, it's not going to be in Spanish. <laughs> and it's and it's funny because Manuel, you'll see him stop and go, my English isn't good enough for this. Yeah. He speaks perfect English, but he's so detailed and so nuanced. Yeah. He's trying to pick a word that – in Spanish that just, you know, you can't quite He's translate. probably trying to pick a word in English that most of us don't know what the word is in English. Yeah, we we yeah. wouldn't know what it is either. Yeah, exactly. Um, and he's phenomenal. He speaks English, and he's, he's a great guy, very charismatic guy. And the great thing is even if you're doing it online, you're gonna, going to be able to interact through the whole process. So as we're smoking each, each segment, we're going to be mm -hmm. commenting on it, going to be talking about it. Um, people outside will be able well, to comment. Yeah, we'll make sure there's a chat set chat up section. So, we'll, so yeah. We'll, yeah. We'll, we'll flip those questions to Manuel yeah. during the process. And myself and, and Chris will be here that day, so I'll be participating in the seminar, and um, I'll also monitor the chat as well. So I'll help kind of foster that interaction as well. Yep, and so. um, and it's here in the Havana. It's Club. in the, it's in the Havana Cigar Club function room, <laughs> right in Warwick, Rhode Island. So if you're close enough to come down for the same forty nine dollars, you can come down and do the blending seminar live, or we'll ship out the blending kit to you during the week beforehand. Yep. And when you pre-register, um, we'll be able to ship you out that package so that you'll have it there so you can actually participate as right. if you were here. Don't smoke those before the blending Do seminar. not smoke them beforehand. And, um, and don't smoke before the blending seminar. I hate to say it. I've been call, through one. Will. By the way, call. this is a fantastic thing. I've been through this with another blender um, from the Dominican Republic uh, smoking these burritos. There is nothing better. If you want to really get the feel for how a blend is constructed, this is the this is the next best thing to being in the factory. It it, it is, and and yeah. the first time I did that, it was amazing how it changed my ability to pick out Flavor. flavors yeah. in a cigar. Interesting. You didn't tell me that before. That's oh yeah, yeah. It yeah. was it was it's unbelievable. It's like taking a wine course. Yeah. In cigars. Yeah. Nice. It's it's unbelievable. So the. So you can participate. It's going to be $49. In fact, I know Paul has the link for it. It's already set up. So you can pre-register because obviously there's a finite amount of space. A um, little bit less for the online people. But yeah, if yeah. you're trying to come live, you really want to register right away because it's going to fill up very quickly. Yeah, um, yeah I think it's like a 40-person four, max. 40-person max. In, in um, studio. And if we're we start to get more, we might be able to accommodate. Yeah, we'll be able to accommodate a few throughout the rest of the club. Yeah, yeah. in the studio here. In the studio next, next door. door. Yeah, we have some overflow space, but make sure you register. Yeah, make sure you yeah. register. Um, and so it, it's it's a it's going to take three hours easily. Um, it's it's a tremendous knowledge uh, event, mm -hmm. and the seminar was just it was just amazing the first time I did it. And the second time I did it was was great also. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm looking forward to it again not only because. And Manuel's the, a, become a personal friend. What's it's December 6th. December 6th. Which is a Saturday. Okay. Um, and the other thing that's going to happen is the Preferito is not made in a Corona size. They are making Coronas in all six of the leaves. And if you participate, whether it's remotely or if you're at the club, after you participate in the blending seminar, you're going to be able to pick 10 cigars any combination can be 10 of one of them if you really like that particular one, or you can take a, a, a sampling of them. There's going to be a, a custom box made for that, for La Aurora and, the, and mm -hmm. Havana, for that. And it's going to be 
$199 for those 10 Preferitos, which is... I mean, in, the, in, that, in that Corona size that you can't get. That you can't get anywhere. Um, wow. And so if you pre-register for the blending event, which is 49 and you want to do the box at the same time, you don't have to pick the cigars until the day of the event. After you've gone through the blending and sampling, we're going to have a form so you guys can fill it out so that we know what you want us to send them to. We're going <laughs> so to no, pack hold it. on. This is like a totally different component here. Okay. So I, I, I get, jump all over the place. Yeah, I get – now I get the blending seminar that we talked about with the four – Peritos uh, in the two sticks, or addition to that, the card of the lighter, the whole blending seminar for three hours, $49. But I can purchase a box of cigars that you can't purchase anywhere else. You can't purchase anywhere else. They're Corona sized La Aurora Preferitos. Preferito. And they're in all the different Preferito blends. Yes, you'll have all six, which is the Connecticut wrapper. Yeah, uh, I'm impressed if you can name all six right now. So we got Connecticut. Connecticut wrapper. You've got the Cameroon wrapper. Cameroon. You've got the Ecuadorian, which is a Sumatra wrapper. Yeah. You've got the regular Maduro. Yeah. You've got the Corojo wrapper and the Black Diamond. Oh, I was going to say, you said regular Maduro, and I was hoping you were saying Black Diamond. Black Diamond, Diamond which so is... can I just get 10 Black Diamonds? Yes, you can get just 10 Black, black Diamonds. I, but they're good. there's a limited quantity of each. There's At a some point, you might run out. We might, might run out. Yeah, I got you. Um, we might run out of something like a Black Diamond. Um, which right. is a rare cigar. The, the, most of you probably know what the Preferito Black Diamond, but it's a rare cigar. Um, we're the only retailer in New England who carries it because you have to be the premier La Aurora account right. in the region to be able to carry it um, because it's so rare. Um, it's a great, great, phenomenal stick. It's um, it's a broadleaf Connecticut wrapper. But um, I'm interested to try that in the, all those blends in the I, Corona. As I, much as I want ten black diamonds, I want to try the other blends in well, a Corona. Well, no, that's that, that's what's going. Well, I, I'm I'm planning because because even though I'm, you know, partners in in the club, we all yeah. pay for our own stuff. I won't be doing one ten ten count box. You got my, <laughs> I'm you going to be doing multiple. multiple ten count boxes. And but now there's a discount. And that's what I was going to say. Yeah. If you decide to pre-register, you don't have to pick the cigars beforehand. But if you commit to the blending seminar and getting a 10-count box, instead of the $99 and the $49, it's going to be $139 right. together. $139 or $129? $129. $129. $129. $129. Okay. So it's, it's, a, it's a significant it's savings. savings. I mean, yeah. it's, it's a 24, you know, $24 savings. Right, right. Um, when you do that, and that's just to commit to it, you don't have to pick the 10 cigars until yep. after you. And online folks will have a way to pick there. Yeah, and they're going to have yeah. to pick it. We're going to have a form. You can do it online. That you'll be able to You're do online trouble, and pick call it. call the store. We'll yeah, we can call, call the store. We've yeah. got plenty of staff. It's, it's, a, it's a total non-issue. Um, really but I'm cool. dying to try the, the Corona sizes because they just don't exist. And um, so you'll be able to do that in Manuel, even if you're remote. Um, or if you're here, Manuel will sign the boxes to you, and we'll ship them out the, uh, the Monday after the show, obviously, because it's Saturday. We'll get them all out on Monday to everybody who has participated and, and chosen to get the box of 10, and it'll be hand-signed for you by Manuel. And it's, it's going to be a unique opportunity, whether you can come down in person if you're close enough, and if you can't, it's, just, it's an opportunity you're just not going to get, as Will said, unless you go down to a factory in DR and go down to La Aurora, you're just not going to get the opportunity to do that. I mean, you're not going to get the opportunity to meet and Manuel. And you've really talked up Manuel. And I don't, you don't really talk that highly about that many people, dude. Like, you reserve your <laughs> – it's kind of like Will with his Oasis rating. Like, he holds back his Oasis rating. Something's really got to deserve that. In fact, that. Manuel's – And to have you talk that highly about someone is like your Oasis rating for a it person. It is. In yeah. fact, he's probably the only person that you will hear me talk that well about in the cigar industry. Not there's not a gr lot of great people. Yeah. But Manuel's knowledge and talent level is just phenomenal. It's Besides awesome. being just a great, great guy, um, very personable guy, um, down to earth. But but just I can't say enough good things about Manuel. He's just he's just a phenomenal person and unbelievably talented. When I went down to La Aurora, um, the second day it was all retailers, and um, there were a half dozen of us. And so the choice was to go to the beaches in mm -hmm. DR or spend the day in the factory with Manuel. I talked the other retailers into spending the day in the factory with Manuel, and we did. Yeah. We actually got to blend our own cigars. Nice. And it's great because, needless to say, it's an absolute disaster for us to pick our own stuff. Yeah, yeah, But yeah. Manuel's over your shoulder saying, maybe just a little, tr just try a little bit of this. He's very good about it. But just try yeah, a little yeah, bit of yeah. this. Try a little bit of that just to try to make it smokable because mm -hmm. you sit there and go, I want this, this, and this. And realize like, the no, skill set that goes work. in yeah. that is is in, until you try to do it yourself you don't realize how absolutely ridiculously difficult it is to blend a cigar right um 
the people who can do it are truly artists mm. without a question. And um, especially, you know, the Preferito line happens to be one of my favorite lines, obviously. Um, and not just because of Manuel, because it's a great stick, too. Um, I'm smoking a, a Cameroon Lancero Preferito right now, which is normally not a nighttime smoke for me. It's, it's my midday smoke, but I smoke five or six of these a week. And um, it, it's, it's just going to be a tremendous event. It, so it's $49 if you want to do just the blending event. If you decide to commit to the 10 box beforehand, it'll be 129 mm -hmm. And that will get you the blending event, the blending kit, and the choice of the 10 cigars with the signed box from Manuel that will be shipped out to you the Monday afterwards. Um, if you decide to do the blending event and, and at the time of the event you decide you want to add and, and buy a box or <coughs> multiple boxes of the 10, you'll be able to do that for $99 for the box. So if you pre-commit, you're going get to get a little bit of a discount a significant discount actually and um but you're still going to have the availability to get it at the blending event if you're not quite sure and you want to do it um i'm so looking forward to it i've been trying to talk manuel into making us a corona size black diamond for the two years oh, i've known him yeah you really like that blend too um i like oh. that blend as well it's 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 it is as far as a stick goes it is the most popular stick in our humidor not necessarily the most sold stick in our humidor because it's, it's a pricey stick it is pricey, yeah. But it is just, you know, it is just unbelievable. It's a twenty-one dollar stick in Rhode Island, depending, on, you know, depending on the state you're in, tax-wise and everything else. It's just, it's a tremendous stick, and to have that in the Corona, if I could talk Manuel and Guillermo into letting us, that would be the only health cigar I would ever have, is if you let me make a Corona Black Diamond, mm -hmm. um, and and privately and 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 have it La Aurora for Havana Cigar Club exclusively. That's a cigar I would turn into a house cigar. There's no other cigar I would do that with. Hey, Todd, have you smoked uh, the Black Diamond and anything else besides the Preferito? Yeah, I've smoked the Black Diamond in the uh, Robusto size. Uh huh. Um, and they and they really don't make it consistently because it's, it's they don't have a lot of that tobacco. They don't make it consistently in other sizes um, too often. But I had the Robusto when I was down there, which was great too. And actually. I'm I'm more of a Corona guy. Hold you. Oh, I got one. Hold on. Got, I got a lighter I got one right here. Okay, perfect. Um, I've had it in other sizes. It's just a tremendous blend, and that wrapper is just not only yep. is it be a beautiful wrapper, it smokes absolutely unbelievable. And I've yeah. got I've got people who smoke nothing but Ashton Age Maduros, which is a good smoke, but it's a very very light stick. Mm -hmm. And they still, if they can get a Black Diamond Preferito and decide to pick one up, it's their favorite stick. Full-bodied guys smoke the Black Diamond Preferito, and it's and it's it's always a home run. Yeah, I smoked the Gordo in that size, and uh, it's very different than the Preferito, but very good. Yeah, I mean, and it's a testament to that blend. That blend is is outstanding. And and, and I sh I didn't even think to bring it over for the show. Cause I I take me a while because it's locked in the humidor. Um, when we went down for La Aurora, they were joking one day because um, the gentleman who does all the tours smokes these huge, you know, 56 by 9 um, cigars as part of his shtick for when he does the tours. We were out with Manuel and everybody having dinner the first night, and they go, we want that in a black diamond. The next day at 4 o'clock, he brought out each one of the retailers one black diamond preferito. In a fifty-six by nine. Was it tapered? Wow! Like, no, not tapered. It was like just a, a yeah. Just, and some of the people smoked it when they came back. Ours is on display <laughs> because it just doesn't exist. <laughs> I mean, awesome. I, I'd like to smoke that's it. A meal. <laughs> but it, oh no, that's that's a couple of meals. <laughs> yeah. Um. It, it's just so I did not smoke that one well, but I I this just Manuel is it has the ability to make very flavorful cigars, very traditional, mm -hmm. um, very smooth, without. You know, the, you're not going to get the new, more current, overpowering cigars. They're just great cigars, great flavor, uh, and and, and the, it, this, you just can't say enough about those. So um, please, Paul's going to put. I think Paul's going to put out the link tonight. Yeah, we're going to make a redirect, and we'll put it out there on social media. Yep. I just I haven't had a chance to make a redirect, but yeah. sure. And but please, if, if, register for the event early. Get yourself set up and on, even if it's just for the blending event or if you decide you want to lock into the cigars at the discount. Um, and it's perfectly fine to wait, do the blending event, and, and choose that day. 
but it's going to be an amazing event, and, and you're not going to be able to see Manuel in the States, um, even even by video, and be able to do something like this. It's, it's, Absolutely. It's a, it's a rare, rare, rare thing. Uh, Jason Wood, who's president of Miami Cigars, was shocked that we were able to pull this off, cause awesome. it, um, which is the distributor in the States of La Aurora, and um, it, it's just going to be a great time. And if you happen to be local, our Christmas party got changed to the 5th, just so we could have Manuel at our Christmas party Friday night, awesome. which it will be open to the members and to the public. We have a big public room, so um, it will be open to everybody there, too, if you want to come down for a Christmas party awesome. the day before and really smoke a lot of La Aurora in 24 hours. Well, we're going to be announcing that on every show upcoming. So Absolutely, um, yep. Yeah, it's a it's a great event. So, uh, Will, I'm told our, our special guest for this evening is, is on, if you would like to do the honors of introducing our special guest for this evening. Oh, wow. Okay. So, um we're, we're joined, actually, uh, I've gotten to know this guy over the past year, and he's been on the show before, but I think, Paul, you were not, uh, I think you were traveling the, the time he was on the show before. Mm. Um, his name is Gabriel Alvarez. He is the uh, national sales manager for Maya Silver Cigars. Gabriel, Will Cooper in North Carolina, and Paul and Todd up in Rhode Island. How are you doing? Doing well, doing well. Thanks for, for giving me a little bit of time to get to the computer because that, that phone just wasn't working out on the on the trip. No, but, no uh, problem. It, it allowed us to, the to actually – um, I'm here. It actually allowed us to take care of some housekeeping beforehand. So it, I think it worked out real well. So thanks for your flexibility as well. No, not a problem. Not a problem. I appreciate it. Yeah, Gabriel, welcome to the show. I'm glad I, I'm actually here and you're on the show. Sorry yeah. I missed you last time. Um, <clears throat> Gabriel, can you just uh, tell us a little bit about your, uh, your background uh, in cigars? and uh, kind of how you uh, eventually ended up at Maya Selva Cigars? All right. Um, let's go through this uh, again then. About five years ago, I took a trip to, to Nicaragua to uh, one of the, I think it was the second uh, A&T festival. And I've always um, enjoyed cigars. I've, I've always been into cigars for the last... One of my 36 for the last 18 years, I've been smoking cigars. My first cigar was on my 18th birthday. But um, I was able to go to Nicaragua to the festival and, and just experience everything that was the cigar industry on the back side of things, things I was never exposed to before. I was hang out in lounges and smoke cigars and get to know the lounge owners or whatever in, in the local area. And I was there with a very good friend of mine, and we just fell in love with what was the industry. From the manufacturing side of things, from the agricultural side of things, it was just an immediate just romance for the industry that, that, that we appreciate, an appreciation, something that not too many people get to see and not too many people understand, the fact that so many hands will touch from the seed or from the flower picking and the seed picking to the seeds, the seedlings, the the the, 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 the planting, the transplanting, the growing, the everything, all aspects of it. And in, at the end of the day, you have, what, 300 pairs of hands that touch the whole process before you're able to smoke a cigar. And, and, and we fell in love with that. We ended up coming back home to Miami, and we opened up a lounge in... in in West Miami-Dade County, called the Neighborhood Humidor. And we just started off doing our own thing there in the lounge. And I had the opportunity about a year after I opened the store to join the manufacturing side of things with the previous company I was with. And I was the operations manager, helped with marketing, helped with inventory, bookkeeping. Uh, and then it started evolving into more of a hands-on with the blends and tasting and, and decisions on what was coming into the market. And we pushed all that forward and I, and I learned so, so much there. It was incredible. And also, um, two IPCPRs. And I, I visited a total of four IPCPRs before uh, coming on board with Maya Selva. And it was just an opportunity that was right for me to come on board with Maya Selva. I was... Um, I was with Coots, we did our thing, 
we were getting a lot of brand exposure finally now, and everything now, that we were doing. Now, Gabriel, was Coot something that was distributed in Europe and you brought it to the U.S. market as well? Well, Coots was, let's say, the child of something that was in Europe. Okay. In the Spanish market, mainly. Mm -hmm. And uh, the corporate offices were in Spain. And they, they started doing manufacturing in Honduras probably about seven years ago. They had a little factory, and then three years ago, they decided to open up a huge factory just outside of Don Lee and, and ramp up production for the American market. In, uh, in three of the blends that the company, actually two of the blends that the company offers here in the United States were founded here in the United States, the Placera Reserva and the Miro. The other ones, the other one was, was, was being already produced for Spain and everything else. So it was kind of like an evolution of their mm -hmm. company coming into the market and introducing two new products here as well as worldwide. Right. Now, now what attracted you to come to Maya Selva Cigars? Well... I had helped launch Coots and get Coots a little bit, you know, well, better known than, than what it was when it first launched and everything else. I was there since inception. And I learned a lot, um, made some mistakes and learned from them and, and corrected them and moved forward with that. And the opportunity to actually become the director of sales for this company and still do everything that I was doing before, it was just another... To me, it was a great stepping stone for my career in the industry. And it was just the right opportunity at the right time. I had to make a decision at that point that was going to be beneficial for my family. Mm -hmm. And it just happened to, to fall all right in the right place at the right time. Now, Maya Silva is the same kind of deal. There was a European a cigar marketed to the European market, and you brought it to the U.S. Is that true? Kind of, sort of. Um, the difference between Maya Silva and and Kutz where I was before is that Maya Selva has at the moment a 19 year history making these products and distributing them in the European market and it's one of the best known markets uh, products in the European market very well rated very well respected it's um it's it's kind of like it's a standard with um, yeah. our cigars over there, that that that's that's very well respected in that market. Do you so is there what, is there what, something? I'm sorry. Is there something that it's interesting, Gabriel? As you talk, I really I like cigars that are intended for the uh, European market, and when they bring them to the U.S., I find that cigar geeks like me really appreciate those cigars. Like, yeah. what is it about the Europe the blends that are specifically you know intended for European? Traditional. It's more traditional. Yeah, no, it's yeah. more traditional. The, the, I, I, I consider myself a geek as well. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate the, the, the tradition that goes into these cigars for that market. Why? The European market hasn't been exposed to the competition that we have here as a business in the cigar industry. Mm. The amount of manufacturers that we have in the United States do not compare to the amount of manufacturers that are in the European market. Why? Because the Cubans are in the European market, heavily. Yep. And then you have the monsters. And that's about it. Mm -hmm. In the last maybe three to four years, you've seen more American companies making their way to distribution. And that's because of trade agreements and everything else mm -hmm. that, are, that are set in place in certain countries. To be able to get these products in there, it's very difficult. And everything goes through distributors, and there's multiple distributors in these countries. It's not the same as here. Yeah. Here, a manufacturer can come set up shop here and distribute their own products. Now, Over there, find, it's very difficult. I find that it's cigars in the European market tend to be on the more medium-bodied, medium-strength, but more full in flavor, which is a cigar profile that I look for personally. In, in, in I know a lot of the geeks well, do as well, right? Well, Paul and I are very similar in that, and that's yeah. that's what I, I have not had the opportunity, Gabriel, to try try the cigar yet. Um, but but as soon as I saw it and could tell the way it was burning and everything else you could just see it was a very traditional cigar which yeah. appeals to me in fact uh, at some point I, I need you to, uh, to to get my contact information from Paul because uh, it's definitely something we would like to try yeah. at the club um, I met you briefly at the show for about okay. 10 seconds with your better half okay, um, okay. <laughs> yeah, and, um, 
So, uh, so I, I just met you briefly for just a few seconds going through. And were they, um, were they, was there alcohol involved? There, there was alcohol involved, Gabriel. <laughs> we were at ICCPR. There was alcohol involved. Um, and, uh, and, and just even looking at the construction of this cigar, mm-hmm. which, which is a big deal for me, and maybe because I'm a little bit geeky myself. I'm an engineer by academia. Um, and I like very traditional-looking cigars. It's such a clean-looking cigar, very exceptional finish to it. Yeah, it just the, the smoke that pours. It's almost, like, it's almost flawless, right? It, it, well, it, even the smoke that pours from it after you take a puff is just. Am- it, I, I'm like yeah. mesmerized by it. Well, no, no, and that's that's a big it, deal for me. It's all about the too, experience. Right? Yeah, it's all about yeah. the experience. Um, it, it's 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 definitely something that adds to me. You know, the flavor matters obviously tremendously. But it adds to the whole experience. The quality of the stick, the smoke that's coming off off the stick is just tremendous. I'm sitting here watching Paul smoke it going. we got to get Gabriel oh, to send us up some samples. This man a cigar. You want the extra one? I'm going to give Todd our extra one. How's that? There you go. Hold on. I'm gonna, and I'll even light it up as you guys are talking. There you go. Yeah. There you go. The, and, and, you know, Stogie Santa talks a lot about combustion. Yes. Yeah, and the combustion, combustion is, is perfect on this thing. And, 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 and so sorry, Gabriel. Just to get back, um, the different palettes, right? The like European market uh, manufacturers tend to blend cigars that are medium bodied, medium strength, and fuller flavor. Um, and in the U.S., I find that there's a lot of cigars that are that deviate from that. Either they're very mild, Ecuadorian Connecticut's, or they're very strong, Maduro wrappers, and higher up on the strength profile. You know, why – is there a difference in the palettes uh, between European market and the U.S. market? I'll tell you, with the European market, simplicity is key and quality is key. Um, you're competing against what's considered to be probably, what, the best in the world with the Cubans. And it's, it's – that's a, that's a debate on its own. But – what goes into the European market has to be something that's going to stand out over those cigars. And there's something that's probably indisputable is that the aroma and the flavor that you get from Cuban tobacco is indistinguishable. I mean, it's, it's, it's distinguishable. It stands out on its own. The minute, I mean, if somebody lights up a Cuban cigar next to me and I'm smoking something else and I just get a whiff of that aroma that that cigar lets off, I know it's Cuban. Right. Immediately. Immediately. And that's something that we don't have that exposure to here. Yeah. So for something to be in the European market and, and, and as well rated as we are, we, we tend to have a very high quality product and we have to cater to those people in the European market, which they're very traditionalist when it comes to these cigars. Because Cuba is right. nothing but traditionalist in the, in the way that they make cigars. Yeah. No, that's, that's, that's a great point. No. Um, so let's talk a little bit. Uh, some people in the chat are asking, like, whoa, 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 hold on. Stop the presses. You're saying good things about a cigar. We got to know what it is. Uh, so, uh, Gabriel, we're, we're smoking the, the Flor de Selva Maduro. Uh, Todd and I have the M15. And Will is smoking the Gordo. Can you kind of take us through the wrapper binder filler and a little bit about the blend? Well, how about I do something better for you? I have a person here that can't describe it better than the person themselves that put this blend together. Beautiful. Eh? No, no, bang, bang. Come here. <laughs> I'm going to introduce to you guys the creator, which is Maya Hello. Selva herself. <laughs> Hello, it's nice to meet you. Nice meeting you. Hi, Maya. Hello. Thanks for and joining us. I don't yeah. think that anybody can describe this cigar better than her. We're talking about, right now, they're smoking, each of them right there, um, Paul and Todd, they're smoking the number 15 Maduro. And Coop, he, you can't see him on the screen, but Coop is smoking the Gordo. Okay. So they're just asking yes, for I'm a aware. brief description. No, the the The, 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 natural the temple. Okay, the, the, the characteristic of uh, the Maduro collection is that it's a natural Havana wrapper grown in Hamasran. And we just have, you know, really treated well the fermentation. Uh, then we have tried to give this a lot of aroma. We don't make aggressive cigars. It's something we That's not, something that we were talking about compared you know, to the European market compared yeah. to the United States market. I'm more into the taste and the 
the aroma thing and with um, but something in your mouth. It's not just grass. Mm-hmm. You know, it's more like structuring the taste, doing balanced blend. And for that, at the difference of uh, the natural Connecticut from Talanga that we collection we use, we do, uh, we have used some matafina to give, you know, like a species that you add to a, um, food or yeah. to a food, you know. Mm. And so that is... Uh, it gives you that very specific taste on all the Maduro collection. Very cool. Oh yeah, and the construction on are, this is amazing. I mean, if you if you really examine this construction, even through the wrap, the veins actually match all the way through. Yeah, it, it's it, it's an amazingly constructed cigar. It, it's amazing. I, after I take a puff, the the smoke that kind of comes off it. It's not an obnoxious amount of smoke that kind of turns you off and. You know, there's that whole, it's not just a balance of flavors for me, right? It's a balance in the smoking experience as well. Right. I got to have the right burn and and draw. I got to have the right amount of smoke, both uh, the smoke that I get in my mouth and the smoke that's emitted from the cigar. Like all that experience has to be balanced for me. And in this cigar, out of uh, all the cigars that we smoke, which is uh, like over 700 a year total, all of us, right? Um, and way more than that. That's just the one I, I was about, so, so about to say yeah. 700 you talk about. I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm, 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 so, I'm somewhere around three times that. Yeah. Yes. 365 days in a year. I mean, yeah. 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 It, there's multiple uh, I'm, I'm of I'm somewhere, us. I'm yeah. somewhere over 1,000. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, the but the experience of this cigar is, is very, very, well <coughs> excuse me, well balanced. <clears throat> Um, uh, how, did, uh, how did you achieve that in the cigar? Well, we were talking about that with Gabrielle today. Uh, <laughs> you know, making one great cigar, uh, when you have a palate, when you, you like good things, good cooking, uh, it's available, f- it's possible for everybody. Mm-hmm. The point is to make a consistent production. And that is a lot of work, a lot of teamwork, a lot of passion, you know, a lot of procedures being precise. And I believe that we try, and one of the, the characteristic of our cigars is that we want to do structured blends, you know, that you don't have one facet of a taste that ruins the balance right right you know the, the the this very fragile balance between strength and strong you know it's not the same and aroma and uh, toasted coffee you have some uh, some things that comes to your mouth but not too much not too much pepper mm-hmm. not too much um it's really there, there's no overpowering aspect of right, the cigar right. and that i believe is the signature between the different uh, brands between mm-hmm. the different rings. Uh, a ring is a proposal of taste, I will say. You know, mm-hmm. and ring gauge is what she's talking yeah. about size. Yeah, yeah. So no. let me ask a question on that mm-hmm. because in the natural line, I was going through your natural line, and I was fascinated when I was reading the the information. You have, I believe, around ten sizes of that natural in that Connecticut shade, and there are ten different blends. And they're not 10 tweaked blends. They're 10 different blends, which is very unusual. No, that because you... uh, uh, I'm, I'm a person that is convinced that the blend needs to correspond to the diameter and to the size of the cigar. And that uh, I, my game in the cigar is to work with tobacco from Honduras and to try to explore all the facets, everything you can do with that tobacco. And there's a lot, a lot still to do. So uh, that is, you know, the, the spirit of the Flor de Selva range. To say each cigar corresponds to a moment of a day, to the what you're drinking, the mood you are in. And so the strengths will be different. The woody uh, character of the tobacco from Honduras will be more or less highlighted. And as you know, you know, you have as many combination and blends than you have of, of uh, leaves. So that's the fascinating thing about cigars. So why do the same blend? So what is the, what is the size on the, uh, on the M15 that I'm smoking here? 
54. Sorry? The number uh, 15? Yeah, the number 54. 15. What is the, the size? It's a Fif- fairly large ring gauge. 54. 54. 54. 54, five and a half. I, t- I tell you what, the, the number of flavors that you can pick out from something of this large of a ring gauge to be that balanced and that large of a ring. I got to imagine that Will's smoking experience with the Gordo is probably on his top three, top five list of Gordos that you've probably ever smoked, Will. Yeah, it, you know, there was a reason. You know, I kept the Gordo back here for myself because I know you guys aren't the Gordo guys. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm kind of glad I did, but it, it absolutely is. And, and Maya and Gabriel, you're, you're with a very tough – guy on the other end there. Believe me, we have a lot of cigars on this show. So um, my, my colleague here is really, I know he's really enjoying this cigar. And I appreciate that. And it's, yeah. it's amazing, as you said, the balance of it. I mean, this is a cigar that will smoke, will reach beyond to all the facets of, of what people smoke. The people who like lighter cigars, yeah. it may be a little bit of a bump up, but it's still so smooth and a lot of flavor, not overpowering, that they're going yeah. to enjoy it. You know, full-body uh, people are yeah. going to enjoy it because it still has so much flavor. It's, it's interesting you say that, Todd. Um, and, you know, in our rating system, we, I think of versatility mm-hmm. as kind of one of the factors in the back of my head that, that factors into how I rate a cigar. Um, and this seems to me a, a very versatile cigar. So um, props to you folks for, for putting out something that versatile. This is something you can smoke uh, – in a lot of different times of the day with a, a lot of different spirits or a lot of different kinds of food. So that, that's, that's a tough challenge. Yeah. That's a tough every, challenge. Every cigar in our portfolio is, a, is an experience in its own self. And, and like she was trying to say, with the, with the 10 different sizes that we offer, which here in the United States, we have that narrowed down to about six sizes that we offer. And I have two sizes that I use. When I do an event um, at a store or a, or, or a showcase or anything like that, any Vitola that I sell, I don't like to do that as an event cigar. I have two cigars that I use, which is a Fino. It's a 6x44. Or the Siesta, which is a Petit Corona. Mm-hmm. And I give those out in the events. Um, those are two sizes that, as you guys well know, it's they're kind of hard to sell here in the States. <laughs> unless it's a very traditionalist smoker. Yep. Yeah. It, it's it's hard to blend. I find I've smoked a lot of petite Coronas, and it's not my favorite size because I find a lot of times it's tough to get that balance in such a small very, cigar. Very and it's very few cigars that have, that offer me that balance. So, you Would know, you try our Connecticut. Uh, yeah. So tell me about the Connecticut. I'm, I'm glad you said that, Gabriel. Um, <clears throat> what is unique about your Connecticut shade? And I smoke a lot of different Connecticut shade cigars. I have not had your Connecticut shade yet, but I am going to try it. Um, what, what is unique about your Connecticut Shade cigars? Well, the way the process, all the process we give to the wrapper. Uh, if you really pay attention to the wrapper we're using, uh, you can put it in the middle of other Connecticut cigars and you will immediately recognize it. Mm-hmm. And it's all the work that is, do- that is done on the fermentation and the selection that is given to that leaf. That's the first thing. The second thing is that when I started in the cigar business, I wanted to do an 100% Honduran cigar. Mm-hmm. Because the, the, there was no wrapper available grown in, down in Honduras. So uh, I picked up the Connecticut wrapper. Mm-hmm. I thought that the color that, you know, I was not willing to, uh, to play in the Cuban uh, world. I wanted people to immediately make a difference with my cigars. I didn't want them to get confused with, a, with the Cuban wrapper they were used to in Europe. So the Connecticut wrapper allowed it me to make a difference. But it didn't come from Honduras. Uh, slowly, uh, uh, I had, well, I always was trying to convince Tobacco Grow to do some Connecticut, but as you can imagine, my volumes were so small that they were not going to do a crop just for me, you know, just for my scars. <laughs> but with time, uh, a crop came along, and uh, uh, we were able to switch our whole production and change blend with a Connecticut wrapper from Honduras. So it, we already had 15 years in the market in Europe. Our Connecticut wrapper is, um, is not Connecticut wrapper over there. It's Flor de Selva wrapper. It's mm-hmm. very recognized by smokers, by mm-hmm. the stores owners, by 
Yeah, very. We are a category because our color is very specific. And it was necessary with the one coming from Honduras to be at that level of quality. So uh, coming from Honduras, the Connecticut had um, was less uh, bitey. Uh, you know, the the taste was not exactly the same, but the elasticity of the wrapper was not also the same. So we readapt the blends, and now we can say that we have a flor de selva made in Honduras from Honduras. Mm. That's really cool. No, it is. And, and I mean, if you look at the ash of how this is burning, I mean, you can actually see the whiteness. I'm looking at the screen now. Yeah. I mean, it's a pure white. There is almost no lines in this. The razor sharp uh, burn line is just an amazingly constructed cigar. Yeah, I, I just put it up close to my camera so you guys can see yeah. it. Yeah, it's, cool. it's amazing. And this, I'm in, I'm in Hollywood, Florida. You are where? In Rhode, Rhode Island. Island. Rhode Island, and, and we're smoking just about the same cigar. I'm smoking the Robusto in the Maduro, and we're talking about the same thing right now. Yeah, it's 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 amazing. Actually, it, it is the middle of October here in Rhode Island, but it's 70 degrees and about 100% humidity. So Yeah, yeah. we actually, I lived in Lauderdale for 10 years. Gabriel, I lived in Lauderdale for 10 years, and uh, it feels like I'm in Lauderdale in October <laughs> rather than in Rhode yeah. Island. <laughs> It's 74 right now here and <laughs> about 100% humidity. Yeah, yeah. Ex exactly. Uh, it's a strange weather we're having here. Uh, tell us a little bit about your, your other lines um, that you have, the Villa Zamorano. Well, Villa Zamorano, well, as you know, we have the three lines. We have the Flor de Seba, which you're smoking our Maduro collection. So I consider that a line in its own. So it's it's technically four lines that we have. We have the Flor de Seba Natural. We have the Flor de Seba, the Maduro Collection. We have our Kumpai, which is our Nicaraguan Puro. And we have our Rio Zamorano. Our price points, when you go portfolio-wise, start anywhere from about 450 MSRP to about $15. So we have a wide range. Mm -hmm. Reason being, and the, why, and, and the reason why we have the Villa Zamorano line is... That is a premium cigar without the packaging. That's why we're able to offer it from 450 to about 675 on a Gordo. Hmm. And and that's a five, what is it, five and a half by 56? Yes. The Gordo, five and a half by 56. We don't get into the 60 ring gauge with that, but it's phenomenal. Now, this line, it's, it's not a Puro. And... I'm still, forgive me, I'm, I'm going to ask Maya to help me here because I'm still learning absolutely everything that has to do with all our lines. I have the Flor de Seba line down packed. I have the Kumpai line down packed. And the Via Zamorano, I'm still learning it. But the, the Via Zamorano, what's our, our blend, our wrapper binder filler combination there? A Sumatra wrapper. And then the Honduran binder. And then uh, mix a blend from Honduras, Hamastran, Azacualpa. And Esteli in Nicaragua. Yeah. It's not at 100 percent. Yeah, it's a solid medium smoke. It'll still give you the smoke output, not as much as the Maduro. The Maduro, the reason you get all all this smoke output is the oils, the natural oils that are coming from the cigar. Um, but the Villa Zamorano is a solid medium cigar, very well balanced, and just the flavor in it is incredible. And for the price, you can't beat it. It's incredible, and, and we have four sizes in that, and we have it packaged. A little bit different than what we're used to here in the industry in the United States is that we have a preloaded tray for the stores. Comes 100 cigars in the tray, and you get 25 of each size that we have. We have an espresso, which the espresso is. Hold on. Here we go. There we go. Yeah. Let me show you what we have. Our espresso, it's a tiny little three and a half by 50. Nice. Great. 52. I love, I love the short, three yeah, I love the short, Robusto, the short Robusto size is one of my favorite sizes. Yeah, it's a short Robusto. It's mm. basically what it is. Great quick smoke, lunchtime, you got 20, 30 minutes to sit down, you want to smoke a cigar while you're on your lunch break or whatever, this is the one right here. And it's not going to break the budget. Mm -hmm. and, and you just introduced a similar size in the Florida Silva Natural line. 
the egoista. Miguel, which was a great smoke too. Same yeah, thing. That's I mean, phenomenal. That's yeah. a great cigar. But yep. that's it's a higher end cigar. I mean, the quality in that cigar, it's the same thing, and, and it stands alone in, in what we were talking about in the Flor de Seba line. It's an experience in itself. And and this is it's it's just a phenomenal size, especially we live we're constantly in a rush here in the United States. If it's not one thing, we gotta go pick up the kids and this and the other stuff. We gotta make a meeting. We gotta do this. We gotta do that. Dry cleaners. This. You wanna smoke a quick cigar? This is the way to go. And when you don't wanna when you don't wanna you know sacrifice on the on the quality, and on a on a super premium cigar, I recommend our Flor de Seba by Egoista any day of the week. Then we have what we call our robusto, which is your basically your standard robusto. It's a five by fifty. You know, standard Robusto. Our number 15, which is what you're smoking now, that's a standard between all three lines. It's the, the 5.5 by 54 ring gauge. And then we have our Gordo, which I, we were telling you, I was telling you guys about before. It's a 6 by 56 on that. And it's just a great cigar. Easy to reach within the, within the pocket. It's, it's a great daily smoke. Cool. Uh, Will, did you have more questions for Gabriel? Yeah. Um, can you talk a little about the your Nicaraguan line, the Compay? Our Compay, Compay, however you'd like to pronounce it. I'll, I'll take your pronunciation. I'm a, I'm I've, I've been known to be quite a bit. I yeah. apologize. Diaz <laughs> Morano. Uh, it's also a story between the person who had taught me all everything about fermentation tobacco. His name was Armando Andres Diaz, a Cuban person, uh, with whom we um, set up this factory that is the few factories on the cigar world dedicated to one production, to this production via Zamorano. Kumpai, Kumpai has a beautiful story. When everything calmed down in Nicaragua, Flor de Selva was already, you know, buzzing in Europe. And Nesta Plasencia was going to go back to Nicaragua and, you know, restart the farms, restart the whole thing. And so Nesta told me, you know what, Maya, now that you have learned about blending and this and that, it would be quite interesting if you had the same process, the same approach that you had with Flor de Selva with Kumpais. So here I am, starting to go to Nicaragua. You still had bullets in the, you know, in the walls of Esteli. Uh, you still felt that mm, the war was not that far. And Nestor was giving me to taste the first crops of Esteli Valley or Jalapa Valley. And so we started blending. We ended up coming with uh, a cigar in 1999, and we decided. And from the beginning, we took tobacco from volcanic soil from a small island that is in Nicaragua that the name is Ometepe. And I thought it was a challenge to use tobacco from volcanic soil because volcanic soil has the reputation to be much richer, much more uh, um, uh, yeah, consistent. I don't know the words in English. And so we, we came up with the blend of Kumpai. But Kumpai has improved, and now Nicaragua is recognized everywhere. And uh, so it's a uh, uh, very, um, it was an interesting, uh, uh, you know, approach for me, because I have no link with Nicaragua. I'm from Honduras. So it was just the knowledge I could have with blending tobacco. So that's the experience of Kumpai. It's 100% uh, Nicaragua. Nicaragua. Rapper from Jalapa. And we always put Ometepe tobacco in the blend. And then depending the sizes, either it's, you know, Esteli binder or Jalapa binder. Now, Which I love, again, that you're doing that, that, you know, you're blending to the size. Not you're just tweaking, but you're actually blending it to the size. And I've just, I've, I've been blown away just as a cigar geek uh, or a stogie geek, just being able to, it's like, it's a different, it's every cigar has just got this, unique profile and it's ideal I mean it's something that you just I mean we're in a there's a lot of companies out there and I can't name any companies that are doing this right now and it's it's amazing 
and that's what's going to help us stand, you know, stand alone in this industry and, and, and stand out when it comes to our quality of cigars. You know, it's, it's a cultural thing when it comes to these, you know, grassroots that they started in this. Um, that's the way she was taught, and that's the way, you know, each blend, it's its own characteristic. It's its own, I guess. Are you a wine connoisseur? Do you always drink the same wine? No. Right. And the cigar is the same. Yeah. You know, Absolutely. cigar is a culture. You don't want the same thing all the time. It depends how you feel, your mood, your, you're tired, you're not tired. You, you want something sophisticated. You want something more honest, more, uh, you know, straightforward. Uh, and, and for me, that's why cigar, on the pleasure side, it's really a culture. And that's make it so special. You know, uh, it's like wine. You know, once you get into wine, you, you never end up learning. <coughs> the sky is the same. Now, tell me about the, the Flor de Selva Extremo, which is an 11 by 54, which is one of the largest cigars... I and saw that on the website. Yeah. <laughs> so, yes. I, our, our listeners in the chat room were asking about that as well. Tell us a little of the story behind that cigar and, and what the, the, the market is and so, the audience Extremo, is. So, Extremo, 1999. Uh, no, 1997, if I remember well. Rémi Martin, which is a, a cognac, uh, man, uh, cognac producer in France, uh, was launching... Um, uh, a cognac that name is Louis Treize, Louis XIII. Very special bottle, crystal, everything. They were launching it in Asia and they wanted to combine with cigars. And, uh, you know, Flor de Selva had already a reputation in France. And so the owner of Rémi Martin, Dominique Hébert de Breuil, has asked her marketing manager to contact me and to see if I could do a cigar for them, a specific blend for the Louis XIII. And so we were still a very small company at that time. And they, uh, I see, you know, some marketing manager from Rémi Martin uh, coming and saying, well, we'd like to invite you for lunch because we have a project, this and that. And we started that project. And from that project, they asked me a cigar that will last between three and four hours because they wanted to do a whole testing to highlight the specificity of the Louis XIII compared to less aged cognac and, you know, to have a whole experience to all their amateurs, aficionados. So we started working with, a, at that time, the person in charge of blending because cognac is also a blending process. The name was Georges Duclos. He had never smoked a cigar. Mm -hmm. And he didn't quite agree with this marketing idea of combining, mm. of making a co-branding uh, between a cigar and a cognac of his production. But we really, he taught me a lot about cognac, about blending. I tried to share my knowledge concerning tobacco. And we ended up with the Extremo. It was a limited production. And that was it. And But some people have found out about that cigar. And they will send message to the company saying, we want Extremo, where we can find an Extremo, what, what happened with the Extremo. So for 1999, New Year's Eve, we have launched the Extremo. That's the story behind That's awesome. That's awesome. Wow. wow. And, and, and Gabriel has just lit one up. That is just a... I just so want to smoke one. That's really, really uh, cool. Are they only available in Europe or, or are they in the U.S.? It, just Europe. For the moment, Gabriel is going to say he wants it in the United States. <laughs> uh, it's a four-hour smoke. Wow. Uh, it's quite an experience. And uh, if you end up with a Louis thirteen, it can only be the best. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's really cool. Yeah, on, on another note, one thing about the Kumpai that will that'll stand alone when it comes to the Nicaraguans we're used to here, it doesn't have that pepper kick that we're so used to with Nicaraguans. It's, mm. it's very well balanced like every other blend that we make. It's made for flavor. It's made for enjoyment. It's made for any time of the day. If you're a Nicaraguan guy, 
you can definitely pick this up. Um, I was doing an event in, in Dallas, at, at Blue Smoke in Dallas. And there was a gentleman that only smoked a particular cigar. That's all he bought. And when we were doing our event, he goes, well, I want to support the event. I want to see, you know, can I buy a cigar? And I'm like, yeah. I mean, what do you smoke? And he goes, well, I smoke this. And I go, well, that's a Nicaraguan Puro, but it's an excellent cigar. I can't say anything bad about that cigar because I smoke it myself. And I can suggest that you smoke this cigar. But it's different. And he's like, okay, well, I'll try it. He went off into a little corner for about an hour, smoked a cigar, and the owner of the store is telling me, Gabe, you know, yeah, you sold him one cigar, but I doubt he's going to come back and buy it. He only buys this one cigar. He's been here for about a year and a half smoking this one cigar. He's my best customer for that cigar. And he comes back to the table and he goes, I loved it. And he goes into the box and just takes everything I had. And puts it on the <laughs> and buys he buys everything else that I had left in, in the compile line. And, and Jay just stays looking at me and goes, dude, I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> that's like, funny. It speaks for itself. And that's one thing I, I tell everybody. You know, there's so many cigars to choose from. So many cigars to choose, especially in our market here in the United States. Give it a chance. Our cigars will stand on their own. They'll, they'll speak for themselves. Just just give it a try. So, uh, Gabriel, what do, what do you have coming up next? <laughs> what, am I known for coming out with things? What is this? No, we asked that of everyone. I'm just starting. <laughs> Well, if we you got just, a winning uh, American market here. Number. Yeah, if you just <laughs> we started. We came back from Tampa. We were in Tampa yeah. all day. And uh, our drive our drive back, we were just shooting ideas back and forth on what we can do. And and one thing I can tell you we are going to do is next year we're celebrating our 20th anniversary for Flor de Selva. It's a, it's a great milestone for, for, for any cigar company to say that they've been in business and been in the market for 20 years. And especially for one cigar line. And, of course, the, the line has evolved and, and, and just consistently gotten better and better and better. So we are coming out with a special blend and a couple of special sizes just for that 20th anniversary. Cool. Excellent. There might be a Lancero and there most probably is going to be uh, a Toro or God knows what we come up with. So let me guess. The Lancero might have been your idea. No. No, no, he wasn't. wasn't supposed to talk about it. What is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, Gabriel and I have talked about Lanceros before. That's why I just assumed that. <laughs> yeah, it's our boyish charm. It yes, wasn't that's... my idea, believe it or not. Yep. Wow. Well, G- G- Gabriel, uh, Paul and I and, are, are, and, and Will, too, have you? We have one of the few shops in the Northeast that does a lot of Lanceros and yeah, Coronas. Yeah, you have a lot of Lanceros in your humidor, yeah, dude. Pr- probably more than every other shop in yeah. the area combined yeah absolutely. um and and so mentioning the lancero is not a bad thing because it, yeah. it, it certainly it sells your shop for sure. <laughs> yeah. I'm, a, I'm a huge fan i'm yeah, a huge, huge fan, fan but of lanceros on a business point it's a very hard cigar to sell yeah mm-hmm. especially with all these 60s 70s 80s right now in the market and i don't know why why it is and i think it's just a stigma thing it's it's a it's the perceived value. Mm-hmm. It's all we've talked about this you know, before. It's a perceived value of right. how much, you know. Oh, I can get this What's much the more best cigar. Bang for your buck, you know? Yeah, right. and um, fortunately, we have we have a location where that's not always the case. Um, mm-hmm. So we're fortunate that we can can get some of those sizes. Lanceros, as you said, is a is a tough sell just because they look at it and go, okay, I can get this six by sixty, or I can get this Lancero. Right. You know, which way am I going to go? And they're almost always going to go to the larger ring gauge. Right. And a lot of that depends on us. Mm-hmm. It, it's your ability to educate your sm- the smoker to try those and experience the difference a Lancero gives you versus another ring gauge. Absolutely. Right. And it's a flavor bomb. I'll tell you that. Right. All the Lanceros I smoked are completely different than the entire blend. And it's that wrapper binder combination that just, if, if you get it right, you just have a phenomenal cigar. So, uh, Gabriel, have you played five questions with the Stogie Geeks? Oh, God. No, I, I don't think I have. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, are you ready? Because you're going to play five questions with the Stogie Geeks. <laughs> we implemented that after he was on. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, Gabriel, three words to describe yourself. Fun, laid back, and to give you 
uh, how do you say that when, when you have two complete opposites uh, and, and serious at the same time? If you were a serial okay. killer, what would be your weapon of choice? If I was a what? A serial killer. <laughs> hmm. I'd say a sniper rifle. If you wrote a book about yourself, what would the title be? Hmm. We'll go back to that one. Leave that one for the end. <laughs> In the popular game of Ask Grabby Grabby, do you prefer to go first or second? <laughs> Ask Grabby Grabby? Ask, it's popular in Europe. Well, I'll grab first, dude. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> if you were to pick two celebrities to be your parents, who would they be? To be my parents? Hmm. Wow, that's a tough one. Sean Connery? Nice. Oh, that's nice. a good one. That's that good. guy's a badass. Yeah. <clears throat> and... The mom's the tough one. Yeah. Yeah, the mom's the tough one, dude. The mom's the tough one for the guys. Sophia Vergara, dude. There you go. There you go. Oh. <laughs> Very cool. Every guy goes with the same answer, too. Yeah. It's, never, it's, it's, it's always going to be somebody in that yeah, category. That, exactly. <laughs> exactly. I had Farrah Fawcett. <laughs> <laughs> now, That's now, a good one, too. Gabriel, am I to hear this right that you are engaged to someone who may or may not uh, in, be in the cigar industry? At the moment, she's not. And yes, I am engaged to Grace Sotolongo. Yes, and I met Grace. She came in here in the studio and did an interview with us. Yes, she and did. She had sunglasses on, which was, I felt bad for her, but it was hilarious at the same time. But uh, she, she, she had an eye infection. Like that, yeah, yeah. Uh, very, very, very fun person. It was a very fun yeah. interview, and uh, you know, we wish you guys the best. That's Absolutely, really cool. Absolutely, she's a, she's a great, great lady. Yes, Gabriel, I got to throw one other thing out there. That ice bucket challenge, right? Basically, I was resisting that thing for about two weeks until you threw it out at me. And I said, all right, for Gabriel, I got to do it. Because believe me, I wasn't doing it. For me to do that was like um, I really had to have my arm twisted. So <laughs> Nobody asked me. Uh, I value your friendship yeah. and just enjoy that you're still part of this industry. You're a great guy. Thank you. Thank you Gabriel, so much. And thank I appreciate you very... that you did that. Cause yeah. it's, it's, it was more for awareness than anything right. else. I mean, For a good cause. Yeah. Grace got me very good with that one. I saw that. <laughs> Gabriel, thank you very much for appearing on the Stogie Geek Show. No, no problem. Thanks for having thank me you. on. Thank I appreciate you. it. Thank you, Gabriel. Thank you, Maya. With that, we're going to take a short break, come back, and talk about our Stogies of the Week.